In the last video, we looked at converting a given normal distribution into the standard normal distribution. We define the standard normal distribution and we will use z as our continuous random variable. We can say z follows a normal distribution with mean of 0 and a variance of 1. If we take a general random variable that follows a normal distribution, we can say x, and let's just get back on my tablet, I've just managed to go off the side with that. We can say now x will follow a normal distribution and we will have a mean of mu and a variance of sigma squared. So in this particular case, we can see that we have now a mean of 40, so mu would be equal to 40. And in this particular case, we're given the variance is 9. Therefore, the standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance, is going to be now 3. Be very careful. Most questions are answered incorrectly uh, when uh, 9 is taken as the standard deviation. We saw that we could make the substitution as z was equal to x minus mu divided by sigma, or if you like, x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. In the first part of this question, we're asked to find the probability that x is greater than 45. So making the substitution, I can now say z will be equal to 45 minus mu, which is 40, divided by sigma, which is the standard deviation, which is going to be 3. So this gives us a value now. What's that going to give us? That's going to give us 5 over 3, or 1.6 recurring. I'm going to round this to two decimal places. Therefore, I'm going to now state the probability of z being greater than 1.67 is the value that will satisfy this right here. In general, in this course, we round to two decimal places and then read from our standard normal tables. So 5 thirds is going to give me 1.6 return. Therefore, I've rounded to two decimal places and I'm using the value of 1.67. So what we've got here now, and let's just sketch this up. We have this point right here. This point is going to be 1.67. We are interested in the area trapped under the curve to the right of this line. We know from our previous videos that the area trapped under the curve to the left of the line would be given as phi of 1.67, and that's all of this area right here. The area trapped under the curve in total is 1, therefore the area that I'm going to be interested in will be 1 minus phi of 1.67. So what we'll do, we'll grab up our table and look to find that value. Right. Here we are, here's our table. So we want 1.67. So this is what I'm interested in. Now, we are looking at this point right here, and all I need to do is plug that in. My tip of the day, if you're unsure and you make mistakes like I often do, just do 1 minus 0.9525. And that will give us now 0 0.0475. So let's put that on, and we just need to go across. So we just now need to write that value. So let's put that there, 0 0.0475. So we can now say the probability that x is greater than 45, which now answers the original question, is 0 0.0475. OK, let's look at the next one. We've got now the probability that x is less than 38. So let's make the substitution. We will now say z. And what we're going to have then is the following. We will have 30, we've got on here, 38 minus 40 over 3. So 38 minus 40 divided by 3. So that's going to give me minus 2 thirds. So what I'm going to say then, if this is minus 2 thirds, I'm going to use minus 0 0.67. So what I'm now looking for then is the probability that z, our continuous random variable, is less than negative Point zero, sorry, uh, point zero six seven. I've rounded this to two decimal places and I'm now going to read off on the chart. So let's look at this on here. Let's put this up and we'll place this somewhere near here. We're interested in the area trapped under the curve to the left of this line. So we've got all of this right here. Okay, and that's going to be all of this stuff here. So this point right here is negative 0 0.67. 
few ways that you can look at finding this area. It depends on how you feel. What I'm going to look at now is going around the other side. We're going to have a standard normal curve and we're going to have this point right here. Now, if we were around the other side, this would be at the point here of 0 0.67. The area that we've got is uh, to the right of this line. Okay, This is what we're given. We know in our table of values, the area to the left of 0 0.67 can be given as phi of 0 0.67. Therefore, if I want this area, all I'm going to do now is 1 minus phi of 0 0.67. And that will give me now the required area. So let's grab this up and in a calculator we will do 1 minus and then we're simply going to look up now in the table phi of 0 0.67. So where are we? 0 0.67, that's what we get. And again I'm going to do it on a calculator so I don't make any silly errors. Grabbing a calculator we can have 1 minus 0.7486. So we end up now on here with 2514. So let's go back. And we've got now 2514. So this is going to give us now 0 0.2514. Therefore, to answer the question now, the probability that x is less than 38 can be given as 0 0.2514. So there we go, using some of the skills that we've uh, looked at in previous videos and then putting it all together with a transformation.